Yeah, it's gonna be kinetic. Okay. <laughs> okay, so my name's Gregory Brown. I'm one half of ASAP Science, so I'm the one on the right. And uh, my boyfriend right now is on Big Brother Canada, who runs it with me. I haven't spoken to him in seven weeks, and I think there's two more weeks of no contact, so we're not gonna talk about that because I'm a little salty, but anyways, moving on. Um, so as you can see, we now are a YouTube channel with over five million subscribers, which is amazing and not ever anything that we ever planned to have happen. We have a New York Times best-selling book that came out last year. We started this channel with a joke in mind to work with Bill Nye, and within a year, he contacted us to work with us, which was crazy. At that point, we were like, maybe we should just stop. And then um, we also have a Facebook page with over two million fans. We were the face of YouTube Canada last year. So this time last year, we were on streetcars and billboards, and all of these incredible things that have happened to us in the last four years did essentially start with us in our parents' basement with an idea. So I was just sort of, you know, gonna humbly brag about all of those things and then take you from the beginning of our first three videos to these are our five most recent videos. Just kind of talk about the transition that has happened on our channel in the last three years and give you some insight into what it means to run a YouTube channel. And then I want you guys to ask me questions so I can answer what it is that you guys are wanting me to talk about. So the first video we ever did was how to see or hear the Big Bang. And so uh, I do not know why we made those two words capitalize. I think we were just trying really hard to make it sound exciting. But that video now has almost a million views, which makes both Mitch and I very sick to our stomachs because it is horrible. It is drawn uh, in a really awful way. They're, they're lighting, it's not color corrected. We didn't have a logo at this point, but we had an idea. And so. I was in school at Teachers College in Oise, and I was learning and talking to kids and being like, what do you guys do on your spare time? And they'd be like, watch YouTube. And when I would sort of talk about an anecdote in a science class, a lot of them would be like, oh, I've heard about that from this thing I found independently online. And I was realizing how often and how able these young students were to find and access information on their own. And then also, Mitch had met some YouTubers who were like, I think I can make a living of this, and were kind of at that point, and he was like, I think just fresh out of university, he was unemployed in his parents' basement. He thought, maybe we can actually do this. So importantly, we gave ourselves the goal of making one video every single week for a year and sticking to that. And so that's an important part because YouTube is about consistency. So we did make that pact. And it was our fourth video, which isn't on here, which was the scientific power of naps. That was our first video that kind of actually like went viral. And we realized what that meant. It's like, oh, it's like a virus because it like spread across the internet. And it was really exciting. Um, so also, if you see there, we made a video called Why Do Coffee and Alcohol Make You Pee More? And these are all examples of videos with titles that we think we learned how to change and make better. We also made one after this, soon after, about how beats and run training at high elevations can make Olympic athletes better. And we called it how to be unbeatable and like wrote it like B-E-E-T. It was just like the most, like not a smart name when you're trying to think of YouTube al like algorithms, but we thought it was so clever. So now, these are our last five videos. And as you can see, we think a lot about the titles. We think a lot about the thumbnails. Something like, is ADHD an advantage? Is definitely about a year ago, we would probably have called that the science of ADHD. And it would have essentially made people who maybe had ADHD or parents, people with ADHD, would want to watch it. But a lot of other people would maybe be like, eh, I'm not interested. Whereas we spun it, we changed the whole narrative, changed the whole story to be about, wait a second, is ADHD and the way that it actually works, could it be an evolutionary advantage? And in a lot of new industries and the way that the world's starting to work, it is a benefit. And it also gets rid of some taboos around it. And yeah, also we did one up there about pubic hair and we realized if you ever wanna talk about anything to do with pubic hair or genitals, it always does really well. So that's another thing we do. Every month or so we'll just be like, the science of penises, and then things go well. <laughs> um, okay, so this, yes. Speaking about penises, um, this video is called, Is Masturbation Good For You? And I think this is a video, I think it has about 8 million views. We made it recently, and I think it's a good example of where our channel kind of is at today, and that we're making content that um, is shareable, first of all, so relatable. You know, everyone has some, some, some sort of thoughts on this. And also, it sort of, again, talks about something that is a little bit more taboo and maybe challenges people and makes people sort of a little bit more excited when really, in fact, they're learning about science. And so this is one of our most popular recent videos. And I figure 
you know, it's been a long week, I'm sure. We can all, like, benefit from learning how our channel works by watching this video. So, roll the masturbation clip. <laughs> Surveys show that 95% of men and around 72% of women have masturbated in their life. But with rumors that it's unhealthy, can cause blindness, and even infertility, can masturbation be good for you? Feeling yourself isn't just for single people. 70% of men and 40% of women in relationships reported masturbating within the four weeks leading up to a recent survey. After all, it feels good. Not only is dopamine released, which helps control the brain's reward and pleasure centers, reducing feelings of stress, but other endorphins released during an orgasm can decrease your perception of pain. For women, polishing the pearl can reduce menstrual cramping. And of course, with the help of the hormone prolactin, which is linked to sleep, you're likely to feel exhausted and catch some much needed Z's. Feel like you're coming down with the cold? One study found that in males, components of the immune system are activated during masturbation, increasing the number of white blood cells in the bloodstream. Solo sessions might also help men reduce cancer, with high ejaculation frequency correlating with a decreased risk of total prostate cancer. Though it's unclear why, researchers hypothesize that increased ejaculation means potential carcinogenic secretions in the prostate are excreted more regularly, decreasing their negative impact on the body. But why have humans and animals evolved to masturbate if it's seemingly a waste of energy or semen in men? Well, it turns out that self-love can actually improve the quality of sperm. A study showed that recent male masturbation reduced the number of sperm inseminated at the next copulation, but not the number retained by the female. From this, it was concluded that masturbation is a male strategy to improve the fitness of their sperm, as younger sperm have a higher likelihood of insemination. Not only that, but masturbation can improve your sexual performance. Both women and men have pelvic floor muscles that stretch from your pubic bone to your tailbone. As we age, these muscles weaken, causing sexual dysfunction in women and erectile dysfunction in men. But stroking the penis or clitoris can activate the bubble cavernosis reflex, resulting in pelvic floor muscles contracting. It's essentially a workout for your sex muscles. Nitric oxide levels also diminish with age and can contribute to a decreased sex drive, but masturbation can help maintain it in your blood throughout your life. But while masturbating does have physiological benefits, it's important to mix up your techniques. Using the same way to get off every time can make you sexually unresponsive to other types of stimulation. This could lead to decreased sexual arousal or performance when it comes time to do the deed with a real life partner. So make sure you mix it up. At the end of the day, masturbation is a safe and healthy activity, so put on some music, light those candles, and have yourself a good night. And if you truly love science, we have a new t-shirt on sale for one more week. But unlike most trends, science is logical. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I think that can give you a gist of what we are trying to do. It's we like to think of ourselves as the gateway drug to science, or essentially like hiding the peas and the mashed potatoes in that we wanna create content that's entertaining and fun and enjoyable, but also educational at the same time. And so every single week we try to do that, but we think that it was executed pretty well here and that you, you know, enjoy yourself, you learn something, and maybe it makes you wanna go home and have a good Friday night, which is great. <laughs> okay, so this is now our most popular video. It's called, What Color Is This Dress? And I think maybe most of you remember this phenomenon. The internet is a wild thing. And so this video has over 20 million views and is a really interesting anomaly on the story and, and trajectory of the growth of our channel because it got about 18 views and I think it was a week and a half and then, si sorry, 18 million views in about a week and a half. And now it's completely sort of untouched. No one watches this video anymore. But it's a great example of I don't know if you know what this is, but many, there was this huge argument online, I think it started on Tumblr, about whether this was black or blue or white and gold. And we decided, it was sort of one of the first times when we realized and like all the stars aligned and people like Demi Lovato was like, what's the science behind this dress? And like pop culture was actually wanting a scientific answer from something. And so we, you know, we were like, this is our calling. <laughs> and like, we stayed up all night and we had luckily already done research for a video that we'd scrapped all about optical illusions that really did explain what was happening here. It's all about perspective and it's sort of like the most perfect image that was picked, that was taken when it comes to optical illusions. And we executed this video in about, I think it was the fastest we've ever done a video. It made us realize if we actually have a really good deadline, we can do it a lot quicker than we end up doing it. But it took us about 16 hours we stayed up all night, we released it in the morning, and it just completely took off. It went completely viral. 
It was, it, it, the growth on our channel was huge, and it's sort of an example of how pop culture and science overlapped, and we took advantage of it. And to this day, we are trying to figure out ways to recreate this, but it just hasn't happened. There hasn't been this magical question. And it was really exciting, because we'd never seen a video have that many views so fast. Like, now, like, I remember, like, later that week, like, Miley Cyrus released some, like, music video, and it, like, didn't do that well. It didn't get many views. And we were like, oh, look out, Miley. Like, we know what it feels like to get millions of views really fast. Um, so it was just really exciting and an example of something we are trying to do more often and haven't been able to execute since this. So this is our most popular video now, but it isn't really viewed anymore. So it's kind of a really interesting aspect, whereas all of our other videos have a very similar trajectory. So yeah, this is our faces, and so on ASAP Science, and as a YouTuber, it's really important to collaborate with other YouTubers and to make your channel have a personality. And as you saw, one of the keys to the success, I think, of our channel is that we aren't in it and that it is about the information first and it breaks things down really simply and our personality is devoid of it. But at the same time, it's really important that we have a reason for people to maybe want to be attached to us, or we figure out a way in which we can get other YouTubers onto our channel to collaborate and grow our audience, which is something that all YouTubers do, and we never had the ability to do that. So we started this series called The Lab, in which we actually sit down and physiologically experiment on ourselves, on camera, on ASAP Science, and this was probably the biggest risk we've ever taken with the channel. We did this in the fall. It went really well. We learned a lot. The videos were about 10 minutes long, which was too long. Um, we've really decided we wanted to execute it as a season and reflect and make a second season. So now our plan is to do the second season in LA with other YouTubers coming on and having the whole collaborative approach work. Um, yeah, so this is an example of something that we have done to grow our channel in a different way. We just, I just need Mitch to come out of the Big Brother house, so if anyone has any connections and we can go steal him, I would love to do that. But, <laughs> so that's sort of another example of something new. Um, so yeah, this is a slide that I wanted to make to talk about the fact that a lot of people look at what we do and look at YouTubers and want to be YouTubers and think that it's this extremely sort of easy process and a lot of people we talk to are frustrated. They think we're doing everything that everyone else is doing but we're not getting growth and no one's watching our videos. And this is me just trying to say that it's a lot of work, 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 work. So <laughs> that is me most of the time, and that's Rihanna, because I just essentially just wanted to be beside Rihanna in a presentation. Um, but it's not glamorous at all. Being a YouTuber is a lot of sitting in front of a computer, doing, for us, tons of research, tons of emails, making so many scripts, and doing things that just don't end up working out and, and canning them, and it's not as romantic and sexy as a lot of people think it is. So if you are interested in becoming a YouTuber or making YouTube content, my best piece of advice is that you need to work so hard. If you think that you're exhausted, you need to continue to work because a lot of the people here who are on these platforms and who are doing well, who we work with and talk to are, in, in my opinion, do not have a very good work-life balance, which is something we're learning about, but they are working so, so, so hard. So I just, I, a lot of people who meet us the way we project ourselves and the way that we act and the way that we seem is very easygoing and chill and like millennial and like, oh, like started in our parents' basement and now we're huge, but it's exhausting. It's been more work than I ever could have expected and happily we love it, which makes us able to do it, but there are many days that we also don't love it, okay. <laughs> and yeah, so this is also my advice for people who are wanting to be an entrepreneur in general and ways in order to have longevity and to not burn out and to maintain personal happiness. And so the top left is an image from our second channel that we, call, that we started called ASAP Thought, which we created because we realized we had a voice and we wanted to talk about things we cared about outside of science, like social justice. Mitch and I are both gay and we decided we wanted to make a video about what it meant to be like a queer person in the STEM fields because it's actually a lot different. We go to a lot of conferences and hang out with a lot of other male science YouTubers and just feel this lack of connection because we just have different interests. And it's just STEM and science in general is an extremely like masculine, heteromormative place. And so we thought, you know, this is a way that we can talk about that more. And on the right, those are our, uh, th well, there's those three in the top right ones are um, our new employees. And then the blonde one, girl in the left there is Mitch's sister. But anyways, she doesn't work with us, but she's a YouTuber too now. Um, anyways, that's an example of growing a team. So we're at the point now where we have three other people who work with us who 
are so essential in that they bring diverse minds, diverse perspectives, which are so important for science. And we are at the ability now where we actually have a team, and it has helped us so much. For years, everyone was like, you need to get help. And we were such control freaks, and we were like, no. And then now we got help, and we were like, we should have done this earlier. Things are so much better. And in the bottom left, that's us in Bangladesh. And so every year, we go to different places to unwind, to get away from the internet, to turn off our brain, and to gain perspective that what we're doing is not the most important thing in the world. And what we're doing, you know, we don't need to get stressed, we don't need to get worked up. And I think that's another aspect of being an entrepreneur is that you need to realize, you need to take a break, a genuine break. That's why we go to places where like internet doesn't work. And <laughs> you need to figure out ways that you can relax mentally in order to remain and keep the energy alive in what you do. So make sure you're passionate about what you're doing and that you can work in the way you actually feel in order to make positive change to keep going, get a really good team of diverse people, and go to Bangladesh. <laughs> okay, and then my last thing before I want you guys to ask me questions is about people who are maybe interested in this new space of media, who are interested in YouTube. Um, it's so easy to think of barriers to starting because you, know, you want it to be perfect, or you see these other YouTube channels that have really amazing lighting and cameras, but the Truth of the matter is, all of those people started somewhere that was extremely lo-fi. Most of the time it's on like their MacBooks using the camera on their computer. And so my advice is you need to just do it. The only way that you're gonna learn about what's gonna be best for your content is by putting it out there, reading the comments, failing, failing, failing until you figure something out and it clicks. And so my advice is if you wanna be a YouTuber or do something in general in new media, you need to just start and for your own independent journey, learn what the challenges are gonna be. You can't sit around and wait for things to be perfect because if you do, you're just never gonna start, in our opinion. So, for everyone who's interested in it, Nike's got it right, and just do it. Okay, so that's everything I wanna say off the bat. <laughs> um, but I do want to know what it is that you wanna ask me, because I have lots of things that I could talk about, and I don't know how we can facilitate that. Big, uh, big round of applause for Gregory. Thank you oh, so thank much. You. Wow.